Good morning and welcome to the Walton County Technical Review Committee for December 15, 2021. Um, do we have announcements this morning? None? Okay, thank you. Uh, first item of business this morning is review and approval of the December 1st TRC minutes. Uh, do we have any changes to those minutes? <clears throat> I didn't see any changes necessary, so I'll motion to approve the December 1st TRC minutes as presented. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. We have a second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed, likewise. Hearing none, uh, the minutes are approved. And with that, we'll move right into project review. We have a number of uh, requests to either table or continue uh, at the beginning of the agenda. Um, they appear to be all at the front of the agenda, so we'll just take the agenda in the order uh, presented this morning. Uh, agenda item number two, uh, the stepping stones, opportunity play, small scale amendment with rezoning. Uh, we have a request to table from the applicant. Uh, could we have a motion to table? I'll um, motion to table the stepping stones application. Uh, we have a motion to table. Uh, can we have a second? Second. Uh, we have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Uh, any opposed, likewise? Hearing none, uh, this item is tabled. <coughs> um, and just for information, uh, it's been determined that the proposed use does not require a uh, land use change in rezoning. Um, test and land connection. Uh, we have a request to continue to the January 5th, 2022 TRC. Can we have a motion? A motion. Second. Motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed, likewise? Hearing none, uh, this item is continued to January 5, 2022 uh, Tech Review Committee meeting at 8.30 a.m. in this location. Uh, number four, the Fayard self-storage expansion. Uh, this is a major development, and we have a request to continue this item to the January 19th, 2022 Technical Review Committee meeting at 8.30 a.m. in this location. Can we have a motion? So moved. We have a motion. Uh, can we have a second? Second. Motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, likewise. Hearing none, uh, this item is continued to the January 19, 2022 Technical Review Committee meeting at 8.30 a.m. in this location. Uh, agenda number five, Villages of Santa Rosa. We have a request to continue this major development to the January 19th meeting also. Uh, can we have a motion? Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, likewise. Hearing none, this item is continued to the January 19th, 2022 TRC meeting at 8.30 a.m. in this location. That moves us to item number six, the Dune Allen second edition, lot seven and eight replat. Uh, we have a request to continue that item to January 19th also. Can we have a motion, please? Motion. Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed, likewise? Hearing none, this item is continued to the January 19th, 2022 TRC meeting at 8.30 a.m. in this location. That moves us to agenda number seven, Club Drive, lot 3326 Replat. Uh, we have a request to continue that item to the January 19th meeting. Could we have a motion at the dais? Motion. We have a motion and a second. Um, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, likewise. Hearing none, um, I'll second it. I, I seconded it. Um, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed, likewise. <clears throat> Hearing none, this item is continued to the January 19th, 2022 <coughs> TRC meeting at 8.30 a.m. in this location. That moves us to agenda item number eight, the Dolphin Drive subdivision. Uh, we have a request to approve by minor development order. It's been reviewed by Kelly Schultz. Kelly, if you'll introduce it for us. Yes, sir. This is a request to approve by minor development order. 
It's project number MIN 21-000052, which is a minor development order application submitted by Emerald Coast Associates on behalf of the developer, Mr. Michael Smith, who is requesting to develop 14 single family lots and associated infrastructure on 2.52 acres of land that have a future land use designation of residential and a zoning of neighborhood infill. The property is within District 5. It's located south of 98, on the north side of Dolphin Drive at its intersection with Charming Way. The parcel number is in your packet. This project had been continued from the November 17th meeting and TRC had requested that we hold a meeting with neighborhood representatives, the development team and staff, which did occur. Um, there were a number of, of topics that were discussed um, and uh, have been documented by email. I believe that the, uh, the representatives of the community had some questions um, about what I put together in the email. I have not gotten back to that yet because it happened, I believe the meeting was week before last and then the comments came in right after that. As far as responses to the comments from staff from the project engineer, those were received after this report was submitted. So um, we are requesting that it be continued to the January 5th, 2020 meeting simply because staff needs an opportunity to finish their, their review but I believe that the engineer is here and wants to present to TRC. Thank you, Kelly. Good morning, gentlemen. Dean Burgess with Emerald Coast Associates. We have responded to the comments in accordance with uh, the, what was outlined in our meeting. Um, we would just ask of staff that upon uh, their review of, of our comments, uh, unless there's an item that's of still of concern or that the staff feels has not been adequately addressed, um, we go ahead and move this on to development order. Were there any minor, I mean, excuse me, major revisions based on those meetings or that meeting? Um, what was discussed? There weren't any major uh, plan revisions. There was a small shift of uh, the road. Um, but uh, there wasn't anything that was a, a major redesign that resulted from it. But all, you believe all of these comments have been adequately responded to? Yes, sir. speak on this particular subject. Uh, is anyone here wishing to ask a technical question or make a technical comment related to compliance with the Land Development Code or the Comprehensive Plan? Which is different than I just <laughs> don't want it. Um, because at this level, they get to do it. Um, but if you have technical questions or technical comments related to compliance with the code, we're very interested in hearing those. I think we, we agreed. We were all there. We agreed. Yes. Ted Moyer with, yes. with State us. your name and spell it for the record sure. just so we can get your complete comments. Absolutely. On the Sorry. Record. Ted Moyer, M-O-Y-E-R, um, live on Spotted Dolphin. We had the meeting. I think we all agreed to the terms. Again, it's just kind of ignorance on my part as to how the process works that, it's, that we know that everything we agreed to was documented and that that's the way that it happened. So I don't know that that's a technical question as much as it is just part of the process and and seeing that we fulfill everything that we agreed to. No, I, I think those comments are completely appropriate because we did have a meeting and the technical review committee did request that particular meeting uh, to try to resolve some of the concerns. Fantastic. Um, and I think Kelly has uh, a response that's due related to some of your questions. Um, I, don't, I don't know that we have any um, open questions other than uh, the, the, the stormwater issue, which I don't know was necessarily part of this whole process. That I, I got the impression from the meeting that that might be something separate. And so uh, all of the things that we brought up were certainly addressed and there was agreement on all of it. I think my only question is, 
you know, how, how do we, if there's a process where you know or everyone knows that it's going to happen, we're good. Well, I expect that that will. I think we had a, a, a good meeting with Public Works related to the possible stormwater improvement in the easement uh, just south of your subdivision. Um, I don't know if uh, you have any comments on that this morning. I'm not sure you were part of that discussion. I wasn't, no, sir. Um, but that is something that we are very interested in, in pursuing um, as a joint project. Um, and I think that I expect that that will happen. Um, I would uh, certainly recommend you stay in touch with Kelly as far as the process. Um, it appears that we've met the requirements of the code this morning, uh, subject to verification of the responses that they've submitted. Um, and I think we had a very good meeting uh, um, and came up with some pretty good ideas uh, to make improvements in the neighborhood. Certainly the stormwater idea to try to alleviate concerns about flooding in the adjacent neighborhood pre-development um, was, I think it was a great suggestion um, and an example of, of the neighborhood working with the applicant and the county uh, to try to make things better. Absolutely. So if I understood it correctly, it would be a continuance to next time, and if, if we all agreed that those things were in the project, it would be approved even before that? Is that? Your, your request is that subject to if we can Um, if you would do that and communicate with the neighborhood, I think that would be very helpful and a, a good faith uh, effort on the applicant's part. Thank you. Thank you, sir, and Thank appreciate you. your participation in the process. Um, I know we may have a recommendation to continue this to the next meeting. I think given the, the review that we've had uh, and the work with the neighborhood, uh, I would be con comfortable with conditionally approving this subject to the satisfaction of all outstanding comments in our review of the resubmittal um, that resulted from our meeting. Um, I would suggest that would be our motion this morning if someone would like to make that. <coughs> I'll make that into a formal motion, Mr. Chair. Um, we have a motion. Do we have a second? I'll second. We have a motion and a second um, to conditionally approve this application and move forward to development order subject to satisfaction of all outstanding comments. Um, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, likewise. Uh, the motion is approved. Thank you, gentlemen, and thank you for your cooperation in working with the neighborhood. <coughs> This moves us to agenda item number nine, the Sundial WSRB LLC small scale amendment with rezoning. Uh, it's been reviewed by Bob Baranti. Bob, if you could briefly introduce it for us. Yes, Mr. Chair. This is project number FLU 21-00007. This is a future land use amendment with rezoning application submitted by Interlight Engineering on behalf of Sundial WSRB LLC, requesting to change the future land use from residential to industrial and extractive uses and the zoning district from neighborhood infill to light industrial on 4.85 plus or minus acres. The property is located in District 5 and the parcel number is identified in your staff report. Mr. Chair, um, this there is similar extractive and industrial to the north of this property and across 393 from the, from the parcel. There are no outstanding comments. Um, it meets the Comprehensive Plan and Land Development Code. Um, I'd like to enter the staff report into record, please. Okay, it's so entered. Thank and you, if you don't have any questions for me, I will turn it over to the, the applicant to answer any further questions. Thank you, Bob. Um, I just would like to, for the benefit of the public, um, even though this future land use 
map designation includes the term extractive use as not what happened in here yeah it would be go to light industrial and extractive uses is a separate zoning cap category so they wouldn't be able to extract it they're going to build warehouses that mirror the warehouses that are in the surrounding neighborhood and you're correct and there will be no extractive uses that would have to come back through as a rezoning if this is approved by the Board of County Commissioners um, I just want to make that clear for the benefit of everybody that's here um, the title of that looks kind of scary when it's happening in yes your neighborhood. sir I agree and may I turn if you don't have any other questions yes. for me may I turn it over Anyone to else have a question from Bob thank you Bob We'll hear from the applicant. Hey, good morning. I'm David Smith with Interlight Engineering. And I wanted to further elaborate on our intent because I know that light industrial and extractive uses can be a little concerning with, uh, with the neighbors. Uh, my client owns the property that's immediately to the north. So uh, their intent is to do what's located on the property to the north, which as Bob presented is a, is a warehouse combination. And I wanted to just highlight on I'm not going to read the actual tenant names, but the tenants that are in those buildings, I mean, they have an interior designer, there's a photographer, there's several artists. So this is not a, uh, a request to change to a, a very intense use. It's just we want to duplicate what's already uh, to the north. So I just wanted to elaborate on what our intent was uh, there as well. So I'd be more than happy to answer any further questions you have for me. Um, no, I appreciate that clarification. Um, don't have any questions um, this development will get a public hearing at the Planning Commission or this proposed uh, future land use map change and zoning change will get a public hearing at Planning Commission and Board of County Commissioners um, we'll take a moment to invite any questions about technical compliance with the process uh, uh, or any other aspect of the proposed land use change related to the code or the plan Thank you, David. Uh, anyone wishing to speak on this particular item? I see no hands up, so um, we will move to recommend a motion. <coughs> Here, I make a motion to approve this project and move it to the Planning Commission for its first public hearing. Thank you, Bob. We have a recommended motion. Do we have a motion at the dais? <coughs> so moved. Do we have a second? I'll second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, likewise. Hearing none, uh, this item is approved to uh, move forward to the Planning Commission subject to meeting all the advertising requirements. Thank you. Uh, that will move us to item number 10, uh, which is the Kaya Block 2 uh, minor development application. It's been reviewed by Bob Baranti. Bob, if you'll briefly introduce it for us. Yes, Mr. Chair. This is project number MIN 21000065. It's, as you said, a minor development application submitted by Jenkins Engineering on behalf of SBG PR LLC requested to develop 10 multifamily townhomes and four single-family homes on 1.9 acre, plus or minus acres with future land use or mixed use in the zoning district of traditional neighborhood. The property is located in District 5 and the parcel number is identified in your staff report. And this project was con continued from the December 1st, 2021 by staff's request. Mr. Chair, there's outstanding comments. I don't see anything that would, um, the agent wouldn't be able to submit in a timely manner. Um, he had one question, got with staff and clarified the, um, the, the question for his answer. Um, it meets the land use. It's just a continuation of the Kaya master plan. Um, can I, it meets the LDC and the Land Development Code and the Kaya PUD. Can I enter the staff report in the record, please? Uh, yes, sir, so entered, and that was my question, uh, is what is being proposed uh, subject to their resubmittal? Uh, 
to satisfy outstanding comments consistent with the BCC approved yes, sir. Um, conceptual PDD and master plan. Yes, sir. And the drawdown. Thank you, sir. Uh, yeah, there's uh, okay. yeah, we did the staff report. Okay, can I turn it over to the agent if you don't yes, have any, any other questions, questions for me? For Bob? <clears throat> Thank you. Good morning. I'm Scott Jenkins with Jenkins Engineering. Um, as Bob did present, this is just a continuation of the next phase of the Kaya project. It's a relatively small part, but it does include some infrastructure for future um, development. We do have uh, three comments, I think, outstanding, too. We're just listing FAR and ISR on both site plans. We have it on the master plan now. We're going to put it on the site plan for this portion. And then one from Haley, uh, which I addressed with her yesterday. So I think we have that worked out. Um, and then provide Sam in auto turn analysis, but we don't have any issues with addressing any of those, so we feel good about it. But happy to answer any questions you guys may have. Um, I think might have been answered uh, with the report. Okay. Um, any other questions? The applicant. Okay. Are we on mosquito control. Yes, sir. <clears throat> Very good. Okay. Thank you. Um, We'll take an opportunity to invite any questions regarding technical compliance with the Land Development Code or the Comprehensive Plan from any member of the audience. Anyone here wishing to speak on this particular item this morning? Uh, seeing none, uh, we'll entertain a recommended motion. Mr. Chair, I'd like to make a recommended motion of of conditionally approval pending successful resubmittal and proper responses, and then move it to the development order stage. Thank you, Bob. We have a recommended motion. Do we have a motion at the dais? So moved. Do we have a second? Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed likewise? Hearing none, this item is approved to move forward to development order subject to satisfaction of all outstanding comments. Thank you, gentlemen. Uh, that will move us to agenda number 11, the Draper Townhomes. Um, uh, this is a minor development reviewed by Rosanna Edwards. Uh, Rosanna, if you'll uh, introduce it for us. And, um, this is Draper Townhomes, project number MIN 21-000046. Um, it is a minor development application submitted by Emerald Coast Associates on behalf of Draper Townhomes, LLC, requesting to develop six townhomes with 147 square feet of fitness area on 0 0.82 plus or minus acres with a future land use of mixed use and a zoning district of village mixed use. The property is in District 5 and can be located um, at the parcel in your staff report. This was um, also continued from the November 17th TRC meeting. Um, and I do want to make a correction um, after speaking to the applicant. I think um, they have decided to remove the fitness area and add additional landscaping in that area. Um, they have also changed um, the original project from nine townhomes to six townhomes. Um, there are a few uh, planning comments, which I'm sure the applicant can discuss. Um, and if you would enter the staff report into the record. Uh, so entered. We'll take a moment to hear from the applicant. Thank you, Rosanna. John Humphrey, Emerald Coast Associates. Um, the comments we received were very minor. Uh, it was basically landscape um, and uh, stormwater encroachment letter. Uh, we've already revised the plans and resubmitted um, with a response to comments to uh, staff. And I believe they haven't had time to review that, but I just request to uh, conditionally approve it based on the completion of those comments. So. Uh, completion of the review. Given that we haven't had a chance to review the comments, I'm not inclined to move this project forward um, conditionally. 
because I would like to review that myself also. Um, so I would suggest we we continue this to the first meeting of the in January. Uh, the comments are. 20 foot landscape buffer on the south side. We've added that 20 foot landscape buffer. Uh, supplemental plantings um, address the type of trees. We've addressed that. Uh, stormwater encroachment. The only stormwater encroachment is from off site runoff, but we are providing a stormwater encroachment letter. Um, sidewalk buyout letter. We've revised that. Uh, demonstrate mechanical equipment not located within three feet of the property line. There's preservation along the entire property lines, so there won't be any impact of those, so no me mechanical equipment will be able to be placed within that property line. Those are the only comments. Where are you proposing the sidewalk buyout? Uh, the sidewalk buyout, it was the square footage had changed. Um, based off of, I think I had to revise for the auto turn for fire access. That's internal. <coughs> yes, that is internal. There is a sidewalk proposed along Blue Pine Boulevard and a multi use path along Highway 30A. And then one side of the internal development will have a sidewalk, the other side will be bought out. These comments are very minor. Oh, and I, and I recognize that. Um, I appreciate the, the desire to buy out the sidewalk. Here's my suggestion. Rather than buying out the sidewalk, why don't we install it for the neighborhood? For the townhomes? No, I mean, and Installed it in the neighborhood's common area that you're on the edge of, that you're part of now. There is a sidewalk along. I'm proposing to put one there, but um, I'll be quite honest. Sidewalk buyouts are not real popular right now at the dais, at the BCC. And rather than subjecting your development to that um, negative publicity, mm -hmm. Why not take that same money and do something for the neighborhood that's outside your product? Rather than paying us to buy the sidewalk out, install it in the neighborhood. Uh, where within the neighborhood well, would you and, suggest? And I'm not sure where that would be, but I would suggest that that would be a better idea and would um, be a more favorable, uh, have a more favorable impact on the neighborhood that you're becoming part of than paying the county to buy out a sidewalk. Um, I, I would I would support relocating that sidewalk somewhere in the neighborhood, maybe on the other side of the driveway. Um, so they got sidewalks on both sides of the driveway. Of Blue Pine Boulevard? Yeah, you're improving that portion, yes. Well, let me make sure I understand it. How much of... Are we paving anything outside of development? Oh. Outside of your actual lot? The only additional pavement is the multi-use path um, along 30A that is outside the property line. Not proposing to do anything on Blue Pine Boulevard? Blue Pine Boulevard has a sidewalk. The property line extends to the middle of Blue Pine Boulevard. I'd like to see the sidewalk buy out rather than that happen, that another sidewalk be provided on the other side of the street. On the other side of Blue Pine Boulevard? We can add that. I can do that today and resubmit. Would that be a reasonable exchange? I've just spoken. The, the owner said that he's fine with doing that. Um, we can put it on the other side of Blue Pine, down Blue, Wa Blue Wave, whatever. I would say we start at, at Blue Pine, the entrance to 30A, and work our way backwards to the next. Um, well, I mean, I think that would be uh, something that the neighborhood would appreciate as opposed to buying out an internal sidewalk, which they won't be using anyway. Um, and the county's more interested in sidewalks being constructed than um, buying them out and possibly having to build them later somewhere. 
Um, That's acceptable. Um, absolutely. I, I, I think that would be a, 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 a more acceptable um, uh, offer to the county than the buyout. Uh, or we can relocate that same square footage or, you know, um, dollar amount to fine. If we can do that um, as opposed to um, the buyout. Uh, that's not a problem. What do we have at the north end? And I can't really see this from our, our plan here. North of the four the townhomes is a lift station. To the right of the of the driveway there. Lift station. Okay. Is that going to be that's going to be regional utilities lift station or? Yes, one? regional <laughs> utilities. Um, is it going to be well screened? Yes. Yeah. 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 Um, Preservation and whatever planning. Um, Definitely going to want to try to hide that. <laughs> yeah. Um, and if y'all are willing to do that, um, I think we could conditionally or consider conditionally approving it if that's. Yeah, I, I just have a, a simple question. Um, what type of street sign is going in there? Street sign? Like roadway name, yes, sir. Or private street. Do you know what type of sign they're putting in? The reason I ask is uh, it's not your issue, but we we literally fire district has gone down there and put signs up in this neighborhood <laughs> because it's private and there's no HOA. And um, I drove by there a couple weeks ago and better than we did, more than we did. So so there's none. So I'm just curious what you're putting up. Would be a blue private road sign. Just a regular blue private, nothing fancy. Not that we were anticipating, no. I, I'm just asking because there, there's no street signs in there. They, they keep taking them. I don't know who they is, but they carrying on us. So I didn't know if you were putting something more permanent than than what's there. We're open to suggestions, but no. Our uh, what we anticipated was just a standard blue uh, colored private road sign. Indicates it's a private road. Green is public, blue is public. Yep, just, just curious. I didn't know if you, like I said, some of these um, private areas will have a more fancy street sign, and I didn't know if that was, that's what you were doing, and then maybe we could get the rest of the neighborhood to put something more permanent so they keep taking the, the street sign itself. That's something mm -hmm. that's desirable to, to your district. But we could it, we could look at that. I mean, if we could it's go. The whole, it's really the whole neighborhood. As a suggestion, and as we're looking for things that, um, and, and I appreciate your cooperation on these other things. Looking for things to make this more compatible with the neighborhood or some benefit to the neighborhood of new development. Um, can y'all put a new street sign up there on the corner to make sure that, um, I mean, it's, it's, I can't ask, I can't make you do it, but in the interest of public safety, Sammy's made a point that frequently that sign right there on the corner gets stolen and I, I'm pretty familiar with that corner, so yeah, it does. I'm not sure why, and it's not like Coochie Road out in our industrial section where that <laughs> sign won't stay up for five minutes. But, um, but this is one that that frequently gets removed. I think um, it would benefit the development all, uh, as well. Uh, I, I think know, it have would. Street signs so people know where they're going. Just sure, we'd be happy to put up a you know the street sign for that intersection. Um, Right there at Blue Wave. Something a little more permanent, something anchored in concrete. I'd assume what they're doing is unbolting the, the actual sign up top. Yeah, it's unbelievable. Yeah, but if you could them. if you could work with the neighborhood to do that, I think that would be. Um, I mean, that, that shouldn't be a huge expense, but I think it would be a huge benefit to the neighborhood. And appreciate your work on. Auto turn and thank you to where we can get in and out. <laughs> thank you. Yep. Thank you. Um, thank you, fellas. We'll take a moment to hear from anyone that has a question about a technical compliance issue with this particular development. Anyone in the audience wishing to uh, make a comment about this proposed development and the technical compliance with the Land Development Code or the Comprehensive Plan? 
Yes, again, Tim Fricker, uh, neighbor of the uh, resident of the Pines neighborhood. Good to see you all again. Uh, for the record, I want to state I'm not the person stealing the road signs, Mr. <laughs> Sanchez. <laughs> Thank you for doing but, that. But you are aware that <laughs> they're missing, right? Uh, no, actually, I didn't notice. Oh, you did? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, again, I want to take the opportunity on behalf of the neighborhood to raise a few of the issues that were previously discussed, um, one of which is, again, the rear setback issue. Um, the 26.5 foot rear setback that is required by a building that's 49 feet tall adjacent to existing residential does not seem to be shown on the, the most recent set of documents that are submitted. Um, can I ask why that hasn't been flagged in the, uh, in the, the report yet? The rear setback does, it does not apply to, it's a three or four story, so it could be three stories as well. A, a, a Bunning residential. You're, you're referring to the side setback. The rear setback is required to be 26.5 feet, and that's not shown on the, on the documentation currently. So uh, on that issue alone, I'd, I'd like to, to ask that uh, this be corrected. It should be off the right of way, correct? Uh, Blue Wave Drive is the right of way to the north. Oh, well, make sure I'm oriented properly. Yes, to the north of the lot. Applicant is representing that the rear setback is from the property line and not from the right of way. Mr. Carpenter, should they be measuring from the property line or should they be measuring from the property um, line? That is not, I mean, that is the property line, um, and that is not a publicly owned street uh, or a government patent easement. Um, well, neither is the entrance to the Pines, so, okay, thank you. Uh, Other questions? Yes, I have a few additional ones. Um, so getting back to the, the setback from Seagull Blue Wave Drive, um, one issue that was raised previously was the right-of-way protection, which is in the Land Development Code, Section 50406, right-of-way protection. In discussions, um, Mr. Carpenter, as you know, in, in the meeting we had, you had expressed the interest that, or the opinion that because this is a private road, uh, the provisions of this right-of-way protection does not apply. Um, we would like to state again, on the behalf of the neighborhood, because the intent that's stated, the purpose of this right-of-way protection is to protect the future, uh, the ability for future utilities to be placed on the street. And we would future like to- Future public expansion of a roadway. This is not a public roadway. It's a platted uh, right-of-way. Um, and we have no authority to make it any larger. Okay, again, we would have like to- Have any public interest in this right-of-way. I know, but, but the neighborhood does. And so for our interest, in order to protect our ability to put in future, it's the county that has decided that the 60-foot right-of-way is the minimum standard for, for utilities and for other infrastructure we place in. We'd like to ask the county that not to kneecap the ability of this neighborhood to put in future development, that we adhere to the 60-foot minimum that is, is in the land development code. But this is not anticipated to be a public roadway. Uh, these roadways, the widths are vested. Um, and we don't have any authority to apply that. I mean, I understand your concern, right. um, but we have limits as to what our authority is in this particular case. Uh, we can't apply right-of-way protection uh, to these private roadways that are platted. Right, and that mirrors the, what we had discussed in our, in our meeting, so. I mean, they are platted, which right. means they were approved by the county at the present width when okay. they were platted. I wanted to state for the record again on behalf of our neighborhood that we're going to disagree with that. Yes, sir. Thank you. Um, furthermore, I'd like to draw attention again, again to the designation of the rear property line. Um, in the first TRC meeting, it was unclear what the front property line was going to be, whether it be on 30 or Blue Pine. Um, it's, as the Land Development Code makes clear, it's the, the planning director's uh, determination. You determined 30A was going to be the front 
uh, property line. Um, so we're, we're, we accept that. The issue, though, is in the definition of a rear property line, most farthest from and most parallel to the front property line. And if you measure the angles, the easternmost property line is legally what should be determined the rear property line and should be subject to 26.5 setback. That certainly makes sense with what you're seeing on the set of drawings. They have a 160 foot rear facade facing that way. They clearly think that that's the rear of their property. Um, there's a house immediately adjacent to that. It seems like the, the rear setback should be applicable to that property line so that the house adjacent to it doesn't have a four story building looming over it. And I'd like to, the county to please consider that as well. That seems like a reasonable request. Um, furthermore, I'd like to address two, two other issues which, which are kind of linked in of themselves, one of which is the, the number of stories and the building height. And I know that there's, there's a tremendous amount of ambiguity within the county's uh, interpretation of what a story is, and there's not much we can do to resolve that specific point today. However, I wanted to raise an issue that was raised, and I believe Barbara Moreno had sent a letter to the county um, pointing this issue out, which I don't see was addressed in the in the comments recently, and that essentially we have a, a case where when it comes to the interpretation of the side setbacks, they are claiming that the ground floor is non-habitable, so it's a three-story building, which gives them an advantage on their side setbacks. However, when it comes to building height, they're claiming that they can start their 50 foot height from the new fill based on the provisions they're required to be one foot above the surrounding roadway. However, that requirement shows clearly that that's only where it's required. So if the ground floor is non-habitable, then they should have to measure from the existing grade. So our point, the neighbor's point is that they can't have both ways. They can either be subject to the more restrictive side setback requirement or they can be subject to the more restrictive height requirement, but they can't have it both ways in being compliance. And on those issues, um, I present those and thank you very much for your time. Thank you, sir. Um, anyone else wishing to ask a technical question? Yes, ma'am. Barbara Morano, and I'm representing South Walton Community Council. Um, I just don't want to reiterate what Tim Tricker says, but we fully support his concerns, especially about the, um, the number of stores. Um, there was a compatibility study in here, which I do not agree with. Um, I passed by the Crest townhomes this morning, and it appeared that they counted that first level as their first level. In the floor plan that the engineering company um, gave us in that package, they are counting that first floor or that um, where you would be parking as their first front, there's their first floor. So these are discrepancies um, that we're very concerned about and a lot of other technical issues. Mac, I agree with you on that sidewalk. That would have been one of the things I brought up. So thank you for that. Um, I think the easiest way is to continue this. Uh, we have uh, great concerns. Uh, this project was concerning me from the very beginning because they came in with nine townhouses, as you know. Uh, we had a neighborhood meeting, and the applicant was extremely um, assertive, saying that this was the right way to go, and it did not leave us many options except to stir stir up the neighborhood and write a ton of letters and you have conf we already met down to six a fifth grader could have read that code and told them it was six so the level of trust i think has been broken from that moment on uh, we have a lot of concerns if there was some smoke and mirrors about the nine townhouses with parallel bars and a dog dish you know what else is in here that is concerning, and I think Tim Tricker brought that up. Uh, I'm asking you not to approve this at this time, that we talk about this more in January. Um, Mac, you and I were at the BCC meeting last night, very late, and I learned something that when a minor development order comes before the BCC, 
It's almost too late. That's the platting part of it. Yes, ma'am, it is too late. The right. development has been approved, and last night that oh. development had been constructed. Oh, no, no, I'm not even talking about that development. I learned from that last night because I'm applying it to this project. So if this project is approved today, they could start you know, getting their building permit and start working it. And the only option for us, if this is not delayed, is to go for the Zoning Board of Adjustments. And I think that would delay it. And It would be circuit court. It wouldn't be a Zoning Board of Adjustments? Can I ask why? Development order. It's a development order? Uh, but either way, there would be an appeal mechanism. I'm, I'm sorry? There would be an appeal opportunity yeah. within 30 days of Right, of and, and I'm saying I think we're going to exercise that because I don't want them to start turning the earth. I want to be very upfront with the applicant that this is going to be an option if we can't work out some of these uh, issues. Those are always options, appeals of any administrative action mm -hmm. um, or any BCC action can be appealed within 30 days. That's right. state law. Uh, and, uh, and that opportunity is always available. Well, I'm just trying to be very Here's honest. Here's my suggestion, and, yeah. and 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 I'm not taking that as a threat because it's not. No, it is not a it's threat. Not. It, it's just being open. Be there are some questions that I would like to provide uh, complete answers to um, in the staff report that may have been uh, addressed this morning, and I think we do need some time to do that. Um, the applicant has made some concessions this morning that I think are, are valuable to the neighborhood, but we want to make sure that we get this right. Mm -hmm. And you're exactly right. On a minor development, this is where the buck stops. Right. Uh, and once it's approved here, they get to do it. I agree. Um, and our job mm -hmm. here is to make sure that the technical requirements of land development code and the policies in the comprehensive plan are adhered to. And that's absolutely what we're going to do. Um, and given that we have some of these questions this morning, that could potentially affect the design of the development uh, for the benefit of the applicant um, and his potential protection if there are uh, objections to what we issue. Uh, we're going to take a little bit more time to review that. Thank you. Because uh, we're going to get it right. We all want that. And it may already be right, mm -hmm. but if it is already right, we're going to determine exactly what part of the code supports that uh, and make sure that the record uh, speaks for itself. Because uh, we absolutely are committed to transparency and making sure that public record speaks for itself. So you can read that record and you don't have to ask anybody what it means. It's clear for everybody. Uh, that's absolutely what we want to do. So thank you for your comment. You're welcome. You so, so you're entertaining the idea of continuing this uh, yes. from what I'm hearing. Thank you very much. Uh, anyone else wish to make a technical comment or ask a technical question about this proposed development? Yes, sir, at the very back. My name is Travis Hamilton. Uh, I live in the Pines, 39 West Surfside Drive. Um, I think... Um, I, my my questions aren't quite as technical as uh, as Tim's in, in terms of what it means, but I think like Barbara said, you know what we've started to see and feel is that um, you know some of the nuances of the development code are being you know taken advantage of you know in favorable instances here. Um, so I, I want to kind of okay. and and let me just clarify for you yep. uh, the applicant any applicant. And we've recently approved a private property rights element to our comprehensive plan. That is absolutely the right of the applicant uh, to attempt to maximize their proposed development. Absolutely, absolutely, uh, completely, completely agree with that. And it, it's our job to make sure that it fits. Yeah, and uh, but but also at the same time, I think it's the responsibility of this group and the county as well to ensure that you know those codes as written are interpreted the the right way. So if you take this, yes, the you take the proposed say density for the for this particular uh, development, um, you extrapolate it out in terms of persons per square mile. Um, that equates to about five thousand people per square mile. Towns like Las Vegas, Denver, Sacramento, California, those are the densities of those towns. So nobody can when that when that code was written. 
I guarantee you that nobody had had, had crafted it so that 30A, the stretch of 30A, would have a, a density of about 5,000 people per square mile, which is what this is doing right here. Um, there absolutely was a lot of thought put in that. Uh, and there was a very expensive plan developed, sure. by, paid for by the state legislature yep. that became our Land Development Code and Comprehensive Plan. Understand. Uh, and the initial uh, painting of this future land use map. Uh, to offset the state's taking of a large amount of future development land in Walton County. Yep. Uh, the plan was to cluster development, to protect wetlands, to protect these state lands, um, but to also provide uh, an opportunity for this community to grow. Yeah. Uh, just like any other county in the state. Fully understand um, it. And so I, I, I understand your math. I disagree, no, I, I actually, disagree we're, with we're your not, point. I don't think anybody's mad, right? I mean, no, in, at least me as a... As no, 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 a, I said I understand your math, your mathematics. Oh, oh sorry, sorry, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah no, but, I, I appreciate your emotion, yeah, your sentiment, and, 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 and that's all what, that is not lost on I think what we're, trying to, what we're trying to do is, is be good neighbors. I mean, we really would love to, love to be good neighbors. Um, you know, and find a way to allow um, you know these these individuals to maximize the you know dollars that they put in, as well as maximize the community, right? I mean, that's that's all we're looking for. So, um, you know, if we can, you know, uh, if this group can take the concerns that you know Tim has raised and Barbara has raised in terms of the actual technical compliance and how we apply it, just in general principle to developing 30A in our neighborhood, um, I know the rest of uh, the neighbors in the Pines would appreciate it. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Appreciate your comments. Anyone else uh, have a question or technical comment? Yes, ma'am, if you'll come to the podium. Hi, my name is Jan Winchester and my husband, Greg. We live at 9E at Surfside Drive, and I'm not sure if these are technical, but anyway. Um, as you're aware, half of Blue Pine and half of Blue Wave roadways in front of the proposed development will be um, owned by an HOA, HOA or um, another identity um, is created to govern the common area of this development. Um, the county should require that this entity and developer, developer maintain these portions of the road in front of their development to county road standards. This will help prevent public safety issues for both the development and the subdivision. Um, my second point is given the proposed density and visitor usage at the proposed development, we would like to see the development pay for and install a high quality entrance gate on the Blue Pine um, at the intersection in order to address public, public safety concerns and people from the proposed development um, with the overflow parking on our streets. The proposed development is different from single family lots in the subdivision and this should be a separation from the uses. Also, we'd like to see the proposed development provide an adequate stormwater system to prevent further flooding within the subdivision. Yes, ma'am. Any other questions or comments? Yes, sir. Well, my name's John Harrison. Uh, we own the property to the uh, to the west here, two point acres. Uh, there's been uh, comments about adding sidewalks to our property, comments on adding gates. Uh, we own half of the uh, land to the uh, road. If we just want to be part of it, we'll work with them. If we want to be part of the process. Um, you own the land on the west side of the entrance. Um, then they absolutely need to work with you, yes sir. Um, are you, would you be Interested in the sidewalk or opposed? Yeah, to the we'll sidewalk? work with them. Um, uh, we live in the area. Uh, we want to improve. Um, understand people have the right to develop the property. Uh, we just want a quality development, and uh, we're open to sidewalks. We just want to have input on it. Thanks, sir. I think if you can uh, communicate with the applicant there, so they have your contact information, um, so they can coordinate that with you. Thank you. Given the questions raised this morning and, and our desire to provide complete answers to those, um, I'm going to suggest that we entertain a continuance to the January 5th meeting uh, to provide the opportunity to include these comments in the staff report 
uh, so that the public record is complete. Um, someone has a different idea. <coughs> I don't, I don't really have a different idea. I, I think um, based on the discussion, we, we should continue this on and I think we'll take it to, to the, the um, next January TRC meeting. Uh, we have a motion, do we have a second? Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed likewise? This item is continued to the January 5th TRC meeting at 8.30 a.m. in this location. Thank you, gentlemen. That moves us uh, to the night <coughs> next item, number 12, uh, which is the Hartsfield Road subdivision. Uh, this is a major development that will get public hearings before the Planning Commission and Board of County Commissioners. Um, it's been reviewed by Stephen Sean. Stephen, if you can briefly introduce it for us. <coughs> yes, good morning. This is project number MAJ21-000017. This is a major development order application uh, requesting approval by final order. It was submitted by Anderson Engineering on behalf of Roberts Real Estate Investments, LLC, uh, requesting to develop 31 townhomes on 4.78 plus or minus acres with a future land use of residential and a zoning district of neighborhood infill. The property is located in District 5 and can be identified by the parcel ID in your staff report, uh, which I would like entered into the record, please. So entered. Uh, Thank you. Just clarification, is this 31 units or 36 units? It started as 36. The resubmittal uh, brought it down to 31. Okay. Thank you for that clarification. Yes, sir. Uh, as you can see in the staff report, there are some outstanding comments, uh, planning, uh, environmental. Uh, I, I did receive um, uh, a memo from uh, Public Works indicating that uh, they have no comments. Uh, they did want something addressed in the response uh, letter. Uh, but other than that, um, it looks like uh, that, that side of the table is, uh, is satisfied. Um, in conversations with the applicant this morning. It, it does appear that there may be some other changes coming. I will leave that um, up to Melissa Ward to discuss that further. If you don't have any questions for me, I, I'll turn it over. Thank you, sir. Any other questions for Thank you. Good morning. We'll hear from the applicant. Good morning. Melissa Ward with Dunlap & Shipman, uh, representing uh, Roberts Real Estate who's developing the Harsfet Road subdivision in the city. Um, just for the record that his staff report is entered into whatever record we have for the TRC. Okay. Um, so in our last um, technical review committee meeting, we um, there was a public comment, and then at that public comment, we um, agreed uh, with staff that we would have a community meeting. Um, we did have a community meeting. We met with um, uh, four people who attended that meeting. Um, two of which represented, I believe, for the most part, the resident, uh, the subdivision to the south of us, uh, Mosaic Oaks, and so that's a total of 32 on that representation. Um, Ms. Landry was available and Ms. Bailey was available as well. And so um, we did have, uh, I thought, a very good meeting discussing the concerns of the neighborhood and, and um, what, what we were looking to do. Um, some of the comments that were raised um, in particular was Mrs. Um, Bailey's property is immediately to the west of this property and she has some current on-site pre-development flooding that occurs, um, partly because in her description, the um, mosquito ditch, on the, on the south side of the mosquito ditch, there is a little bit of a, of a raise and then a road that goes across uh, to follow along that mosquito ditch. So there was no way for anything that's on that property to uh, dump into that. We would like to consider and propose as a solution to her a slight modification of stormwater, um, not to change anything that we have existing, but to add along that western boundary line a little bit of a berm to keep it from flowing into her property and then possibly a pipe that would allow it to dump into the ditch 
um, specifically in any other runoff. Ours is directly um, designed to go into our stormwater pond, but um, that property behind the townhomes on the west, that's the only concern. So we would need to get approval by the mosquito control or some comment from them. Okay, she already has two pipes that come in off of that property right there that do go into the mosquito control ditch. Um, she had filled in a pond that they dug by hand several years ago. We had actually went in there a year ago um, just as a courtesy and went ahead and cleared that pipeline out between her property line and the one adjacent to it on the west. Um, so there, there's actually two pipes in there that do drain that out. <clears throat> on her property? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. It, okay. So is there, she's, her statements is that our property flushes to her backyard. No, it does not. She's got dirt on the backside over there that she had hauled in. She was actually, her and her son were talking about uh, putting an RV park or something in there at one point, so they cleared a bunch of land right there behind that. My apologies. Yeah, and she had dirt burned up back there. She had brought concerns to us about the flooding issue, which turned out to be something they created themselves. We went in as a courtesy, went ahead and cleared out that pipeline between her and the property adjacent to the west. Um, any flow issues that are through there have been caused by her, quite frankly. That's what I have told her in the past. I've been out there multiple times prior to this development going on. So, um, and I understand your comments uh, regarding her property. Um, an additional pipe on our property, that's a no-go. I just need to be able to tell On you your that. property? Yeah. Yeah, that, that's fine as long as you go <clears throat> as long as you go by the parameters that we gave you for discharge on that, um, which I, right. you've already got all of that. I, right. I, I know you've got one discharge on there right now, um, so you're looking at doing an additional discharge to the west. Is that Just correct? Just to the west, close to her uh, property line. You know, specifically to address the fact that she says it sheets to her property. That that I don't see being a problem. Again, I okay. would like to see it on the plans. Um, oh yeah. And you know just take a look at it, Bert. I mean, there's, it, that's up to what the board decides to do. I don't have a problem with it um, as long as it meets um, all the requirements that we had set forth previously. Okay. I appreciate you. Thank you. Um, an additional comment uh, to the neighbors to the south. So let me just clarify for the record. It originally was submitted by Anderson Engineer. Anderson Engineering is 36 units. And um, after I think one or two, T one TRC meeting, maybe two, and some comments on compatibility, the um, owner of the property contacted Dunlap and Shipman to get some um, additional assistance on their compatibility. Immediately, one of the things that we did was we um, revised the site plan, took it down to 31 units, and took the buildings out of the wetlands. They were going to put a stormwater pond on the wetland to the southwest and there was gonna be some attachments and, and different things on the one to the southeast. And we, um, we've we asked them to, and they did comply, take it completely out of the wetlands and, and um, revise the roadway so that it would avoid wetland impacts as well. So that went down to 31. At our community meeting, the there's, as you know, there's a lot of discussion about um, how many units is too many units and so forth. And so we've talked about um, and this is something that we are um, discussing with the developer about reducing it by an additional four units. But in addition to that, uh, because the property owner to the south specifically asked if we would get rid of the four units on his side, uh, the south side, uh, so that he would have all that vegetation that's already there. What we, um, but the immediate comment after that was that these buildings appeared to them as apartments and um, it didn't look conducive to the neighborhood that they are so very, um, you know, that they're invested in. So we suggested that they, um, instead of take out those four units, which would not address all of their compatibility concerns, is that we would take out four units potentially, and the developer still has to, uh, we're, we're, we're um, in negotiations with the developer right now to, to look at that. Um, specifically to take out potentially those four units, but to change, not those four units, but to take out four and change these to triplexes, to add space between the buildings, to make it look like um, more of a single family home, large single family homes, three triplexes, but to put make it look like there's space between them and to create a community look as opposed to just a line of houses. So that's what we are proposing to do. We have not resubmitted. 
um, uh, those particular items. We are talking about, we had suggested a fence along the western boundary. They asked us not to put in a fence uh, um, because it would, in, it would inhibit any possible animals traversing the property. So they asked us to just add vegetation, mature vegetation that's native to that area, to that community, to that property. And we are um, proposing that we would do that. And um, again, so our proposed changes would include potentially um, a stormwater, a um, little bit of a stormwater relief system for the neighbor to the west that pipes um, underneath that little road there and then to the mosquito ditch, removal of potentially four units and creating triplexes and then some additional vegetation and as much as possible pine trees. So um, that's, that's the proposal that we've presented to the applicant. We have not received confirmation at yet. So, you know, fair notice, we may beef up what we have here and resubmit just exactly what we have, or we may submit what we are proposing, which may be more compatible to the situation. Um, I wanted to address, Mr. Um, in the staff report, there is a comment that a new compatibility analysis had been submitted. That is not correct. I believe that the applicant uh, applicant's engineer had written that it was going to be submitted and they just um, moved on and submitted that. We had not um, completed the revised compatibility analysis because we were still um, working out our uh, community concerns. So with that, what we, um, what we would like to request is a continuance to the, mid, the meeting mid-January um, to give us time to, do, which we find are minor changes to the plan, um, resubmit and, and be able to come back mid-January, hopefully, to be able to be approved to move on to the Planning Commission in February. January 19? Yes. Okay. Um, do we have uh, any questions? I did have one more thing, just to get it on the record. If we are going to change that by reducing it to four units, reducing it by four units, that will leave us at 27 which based on this acreage is about 5.6 units per acre. Just for the record. Thank you. If, if you went to triplexes, how many would that be? Nine, nine buildings. How many triplexes? Oh, 27. Okay. In nine sections, yeah. Sorry. I'm trying to do the math. I'm not good Sometimes at math. <laughs> <laughs> I'll help you out. <laughs> I'm trying to get it. How many units total? 27. From 36 to 31 to 27. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate your um, willingness to work with the neighbors uh, and uh, find some compatibility. Um, we will entertain a continuance to January 19th. Um, and while we're here, is there anyone here that wishes to make a technical comment or te ask a technical question or add something related to the technical compliance to the record. My name is Kyla, K-Y-L-A, Jacobson, J-A-C-O-B-S-E-N. Good morning. Um, I'm kind of late to this. I just moved here. Um, Welcome. <laughs> I, I live in Seclusion Bay, so kitty corner across the street from this proposed development. Um, I actually missed the public meeting that happened last week. I found out about it as it was happening, so uh, otherwise I would have been there. My only concern is the stormwater. I just wanted to come up and speak so my name could be on record. I will um, meet with Melissa um, after this just to get some plans. I actually am a stormwater engineer by training. I did that. I worked in Illinois and am a registered professional engineer. Are you working here now? No, I am not. Or are you I looking for a job? <laughs> <laughs> um, but tremendous need for professional engineers in Walton County at the moment. Yeah, well, uh, where we I was some open jobs. Okay, well, where I was from, we had a plethora, and it was kind of a joke when I said I was a stormwater engineer. People like poo pooed that idea. But anyway, so I just wanted to get on record. Very important here. <laughs> yeah, I Very trust me. Here. In the few months I've lived here, I have noticed that. So um, I just wanted to get on record. I will meet with Melissa because I, I don't even have plans and specs or anything, but I want to I want to see the stormwater plan as it relates to this particular well, development. Uh, one thing you will find uh, now that you've moved here is everything that we get, you can see electronically 24 hours a day. 
Oh, really? Okay. Yes. We are completely, our system is completely transparent. Every piece of correspondence uh, goes into the same record, and you can review that at your convenience from wherever you have internet access. Okay, well, then I need to get that link, so I will I'll work on that. So, all right, thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, anyone else? Yes, ma'am. And felt. Can we get your name? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm Margaret Landry. Live in the neighborhood. Um, and uh, we felt heard. You know, we definitely felt heard, and we appreciate that. Um, I, I do have an issue that I, I, I'm asking you if it's a technical issue, but it is re with regard to compatibility. Um, and I know they've lowered the numbers, and I, I think, you know, the, the code reads between 2 and 8 for neighborhood infill. And I've been told in the past, you are absolutely crazy. They are going to laugh at you if you ask for 2. And I get that. But developers ask for 8, and they don't get laughed at. So <laughs> I don't know why a community member, if they asked for 2, would get laughed at. But um, our neighborhood has a lot of conservation residential around it. So I think we should be a little bit further, and I've told Mrs. Ward, Ms. Ward that, and I think you know she understands, and they need to maximize their profits, and I get that. But at the same time, our neighborhood does flood. I don't think that that density, seven units per acre, 6.35 units per acre, is compatible. I think that we should go on the lower end, and that's really all I had to say. Um, does it ever happen that in neighborhood infill you get yeah. Two two but units per acre. Yes, she's proposing five and change now. But that's not two. Point. Oh, <laughs> does it ever happen? It's yes, two? that's what I'm asking. Why Do not? we ever go? I mean, the code reads two, so. Um, occasionally that does happen on much smaller parcels, but um, and it depends on the environmental sensitivity. I mean, there are certain parcels where you just can't physically construct. Uh, right, they, the I'm, maximum density, and that exists throughout our county. Right, but you know, and I have some pictures if you want to see them. But this area is very wet. A harvested floods. You know, it, you don't even have to have a hurricane; you just have to have a lot of water. So, and this year, I just think increasing density in a floodplain is not where we want to go as a county. Uh, I thank you for your comment. Thank you. Melissa, would you like to make any other comments, or um, you have requested we continue to January 19th um, to give you additional time to to work with your client in the neighborhood, and we appreciate that. I <coughs> uh, appreciate the comments that have been offered this morning uh, from the neighborhood, also, and appreciate your willingness to work with the neighborhood. Um, just hope they're not having to pay you by the word. <laughs> um, but thank you for that. Um, we'll entertain a motion to continue this item to January 19th, Tech Review Committee at 8.30 a.m. in this location. So moved. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed, likewise? Hearing none, uh, this item is continued to January 19th. Thank you, Melissa. We will move to item number 13, the Payne Street Cottages Plat. Uh, this has been reviewed by Tim Brown. Tim, if you could introduce it for us. Yes, thank you. Uh, this is a minor plat application submitted by Emerald Coast Associates on behalf of Ascot Construction, requesting approval to Plat two single family lots and associated infrastructure on 0.623 acres with a future land use of residential and a zoning of low density residential. Projects located in, I don't have it, but I think it's in District 5. Um, there's some minor comments from, in, from planning, minor comment from uh, floodplain, and uh, I did not receive any comments from Public Works. from county surveyor. Uh, with that, I'd like to enter the staff report into the record, and if you don't have any questions, I'll turn it over to the applicant. Thank you, Tim. Good morning.
morning. Daryl Burgess with Emerald Coast Associates. I do have comments from the county surveyor about changing the uh, chairman from Trey Nick to Michael Barker. That's an easy fix, as well as I believe the others are minor. We'll be happy to make those revisions and resubmit. We would request uh, approval to proceed to BCC, please. Any questions? Anyone have any questions? Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Daryl. Anyone here with, wishing to ask a technical compliance question about this particular application? Um, seeing none, uh, we'll entertain a recommended motion. Uh, these are minor comments. I see no reason to uh, hold it up, so I suggest we uh, move it forward to the uh, Board of County Commissioners when all outstanding comments have been resolved. Thank you, Tim. Uh, we have a recommended motion. Do we have a motion at the dais? So moved. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Yep. Second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, likewise. Hearing none, uh, this item is conditionally approved to move forward to the Board of County Commissioners, subject to satisfaction of outstanding comments. Thank you, gentlemen. Uh, we'll move to item number 14, Hollow Lake large-scale amendment with rezoning. Um, this has been reviewed by Bob Baranti. Bob, if you could introduce it for us. Yes, Mr. Chair. This is FLU 21-00008. Um, this is future land use amendment with rezoning application submitted by Emerald Coast Associates on behalf of Black Creek of Northwest Florida, requesting to change the future land use from residential to commercial and the zoning district from urban residential to business park on 16. 165.33 plus or minus acres. The property is in District 1 and the parcel number can be found in your staff report. Mr. Chair, there are a number of comments on this future land use. Um, I've spoke with the applicant. We don't traditionally move land uses forward with comments until they're addressed. Um, the agent is here to to um, to answer any questions on the staff report. I have comments. Um, environmental has comments, and flood has comments, and there they are in the staff report. May I enter the staff report in the record? Uh, so entered. Do you have any questions for me before I turn it over to the applicant? Um, we'll hear from the applicant. Thank you, Bob. Yes, Mr. Chair. Good morning. Dean Burgess with Emerald Coast Associates. Um, I've read through the staff report, and uh, there, while there are some comments out, uh, I believe that they're all relatively simple in nature um, with regard to the uh, land use and zoning uh, request. I agree at the time of um, development order submittal, we'll have to address floodplain uh, concerns. Basically how that will be done is um, the, the A flood zones coincide with uh, wetland areas that we do not intend to, to impact. Um, so there's, there's not an intent or a desire to uh, put any development in those flood uh, flood zone areas as well as the uh, the wetland areas um, once that's understood I believe uh, you know these comments become relatively straightforward um, there was a request for us to uh, change the survey the acreage on the survey to only reflect um, the the amendment at hand this was for the entire property Currently, a portion of the property is business park, which is what we're asking for. So I didn't see the harm in saying we, we want to make the entire uh, property business park. We can easily make that uh, acreage revision to only reflect what is currently not business park. What portion is business park? Uh, the southern portion along uh, County Road 3280. Isn't that general commercial? 
the um, future land use category is commercial. Um, zoning is business park. Okay. Yeah, there it is. Sorry about that. All right. Um, and we're proposing to take the entire site to business park? Yes. Well, actually, what we're going to do is the remainder of the site. We will reduce that acreage to only reflect what is not currently business park. Um, Taking the urban residential park to business park. Correct. That's right. Um, what about uh, water and sewer availability? Uh, we can get that from the city of Freeport. Um, I believe water is available on Block Street, but not sewer. Possibly, I can't. I don't. I don't recall. I know there's a there's a force main uh, that's there along, uh, I believe it's 3280. Um, and, and water is available as well. With the holidays coming, I mean, I don't, I don't see that a continuance is, is, is a problem or concern. By the time we respond, I don't know that staff will have a chance to look at it before the TRC anyway. So um, I'm not necessarily uh, opposed to the continuance, I would just say I, I'm, I'm very confident uh, we, when we come back to the TRC meeting, these will be addressed, and hopefully we can go right into the Planning Commission and Board of County Commissioners. Um, okay, I wanted just from a a planning schedule standpoint, Planning Commission in February. That would be fine. Yeah, that's that's suitable for us. So the the continuance, I just my concern was that uh, that there was some large comment that I wasn't aware of or that that would be time consuming. I'm just not seeing it. But I understand with the schedules, our schedule as well as the county's schedule with the holidays and so forth, it's probably unrealistic that this would be reviewed and advertised in time for any January meeting. Um, it seems like the land uses that are presently and zoning that are presently applied resulted from a lawsuit some number of years ago. There was a settlement agreement um, associated with this property, correct? Yeah, that took it to the urban residential and, and the commercial part, I think. Correct. My weak memory at least gives me a clue. <laughs> Your memory's good. It's accurate. Um, <coughs> yeah, I... I don't see a problem with um, that, that uh, review schedule. Right yeah, here. that's fine. That works for us. That's fine. Um, what meeting do we want to continue it to? 5th or 19th? Subject, and, and I'm comfortable with going ahead and advertising for doing the February Planning Commission. Yeah. Anticipating you'll be able to close the loop before then. Um, I mean, we can have our responses in, you know, for January 5th. I just don't know that staff will be able to have them reviewed and so forth. I'm fine with the 14th if we'd be able to make the, the February Planning Commission meeting. Why don't we do that? Let's give staff time to review it and you time to, to resubmit okay. on that. That's um, fine. And we'll continue, propose to continue to January 19th, but go ahead and anticipate that you're going to advertise for the February Planning Commission. All right. Sure, that's fine. Um, and that will keep us on that schedule. All right. Um, problem. Okay, thanks, sir. Um, Thank you. Do we have anyone in the audience that wishes to make a comment about this proposed application? Seeing none, uh, we'll entertain a motion to continue this uh, application to the January or Technical Review Committee meeting. So moved. Yes, sir. Um, I just wanted to, to put it on the record. Dean understands. The whole property's not getting rezoned. There's an lesson except the golf power run. So that'll remain. Which is that little keyhole from the east side there? Correct. It, it's for, um, I believe, transformer. Uh, there's a power line. Power line. 
so that'll remain urban residential uh, and the piece on the front would remain business park on 32A okay well that'll give us time to to make those adjustments to the report also um, seeing no other uh, requests or comments uh, we'll entertain that motion to continue to January 19th uh, at 8.30 a.m. in this location. Second. Motion by Sammy. Um, and we have a second. Uh, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, likewise. Hearing none, uh, this item is continued to January 19, 2022 at 8.30 a.m. in this location. Uh, and that appears to conclude our agenda. We'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Merry Christmas to you, Mac. Um, we stand adjourned, and Merry Christmas to everyone. Thank you, Merry Sammy. Merry Christmas to y'all. Um, have a very safe holiday, and um, do something fun.